Hi everyone, it's been a while since I put a video up so I thought I'd just give you a little update. Uh, this last week I met a fellow YouTuber and uh, we met up and had coffee and talked knives and whatnot and things like that and it turns out he has got a plasma cutter so my next knife I'm gonna actually be shown and be allowed to try out his plasma cutter to cut the steel and to make out the actual knife blank. Um, I'll be sure to uh, film it all so that you guys can see. Um, and also, I met a fellow knife maker who's not so much a YouTuber, rather a Facebooker. Um, he he makes some really nice knives, and I'll uh, be showing you some of that uh, in this video. I actually filmed while I was there filmed a bit of his workshop and took a lot of photos of some of his knives and also there is another youtuber here in Brisbane who um, I probably will meet up with soon but I notice on his channel he doesn't have a lot of kit like a lot of us do and uh, he hasn't done an unboxing video so I thought I uh, will send him a little something uh, to help him along the track of bushcraft and also maybe he can do his very first unboxing. I'm just about to edit all of the footage that you're about to watch so I'll leave it there for now and I'll see you guys later. Bye. There's no scanning, there's no um, um, decarburation or anything like that. Yeah. Because I mean some people like the, um, the scale look on there but it, yeah. it depends, you know, some people look at it and go, oh, that's ugly. Yeah. And yeah, they'll, they'll yeah. go for something like that. Yeah. But then you'll get another person who'll see that and don't like it. That's too right. Strong. That's got character, but I like that. This, this one's going to, well, I, I've just started to put the, the bevels on, but this, this one's going to go with uh, or something a bit like this, or something hmm. a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit rough. Yeah. Um, because I'm thinking these two, Obviously, that's you've done that with the powder and the uh, foil. Uh, no, this no? one, no, 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 no. That's why the still, you see, the still marks. Oh, is that from the same problem? No, 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 no. This one was quenched uh, as as it is naked. Oh, okay, right. Um, so this this one was actually like like this. Okay, because um, so that is that's uh, the foil. The foil that's stuck yeah, to the actual, yeah, yeah, the welded yeah. to the steel. Yeah. And you can solve that with baby powder. Yep. So you, you make the envelope with the foil. Yep. You sprinkle um, baby powder in the foil or on the blade. I, I no, I, I've got the the foil. I put baby powder all over. Yep. Put the blade in. Put a bit of baby powder over, and then fold, squeeze it nicely, yep. and then fold uh, to have a yep. part a bit like like this with. Um, Baby cool. powder inside. Um, that prevents that. Yeah, and baby powder is um, is a mineral. Yep. So it doesn't burn or mm -hmm. or anything at all. So it's been working well. Is this your folder that you? No. Um, well, th this one. A um. Uh, it's not a folder actually. It's a small knife. It's a present for the guy who, who's making the short film about my knife. So, oh, okay. And he loves his... Well, he's, he, he's a movie maker. Yeah. Uh, you, you've probably um, seen this very old French picture from a movie called The Trip to the Moon. When there's a... Yeah. The, the Moon. The, one of the first science fiction films ever made. Yeah, yeah. by George Melies, yeah. like this. So that's what you're going to design on that. Except that here, the moon's going to be looking to the side, and the rocket's going to be on its way like this. <laughs> <laughs> and with your etching skills, it's going to look really. It should good. be alright. And then the handle is going to be made of several plates of um, copper, with the uh, clarity of um, yeah rivets. Very small. Um, so that goes to the construction of the rocket with the rivets. The yeah, pins, yeah, 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 yeah. So that, that's the idea. Yeah. So I haven't told him about it yet. I told him I was going to make him a knife one day. <laughs> um, and he's a, he, he's, he's a very, very talented guy. You know? 
Just look around, you've got abrasives, you've got yep. tape, yep. deer antler, woodworking tools. Yeah. Lots of bits. Yeah, it's the same as me. I've, I've got some bits that are still in their cases, so I know the measurements, and I've got yep. other bits that are just in the box. These are yours. And you look around and you've got um, bits of steel lying around. Yeah. you got a stropper. And then more bits. Yeah. This is this is typical of a knife maker shop now. Yeah. This I need to get some of. Uh, acrylic. Yeah. Yeah. Because I've seen one that um, I've got a big piece which I've never used. Um, it's called it's jade, fake jade. You know, acrylic. Uh, yeah, acrylic yeah, jade. yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, this stuff. I've seen some really nice knives made with with this. Because there's that, and then there's. Um, Things like, uh, did you make this? No, no, that's uh, 1830 something. Uh, Saber cavalry, uh, cavalry sword, yeah. Um, a rapier, that no, would a be sab no, sabers are mostly naval, I think. So, it must uh, be a rapier. No, 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 it's a sword, okay. Uh, that will be fitted with, um, with something like this. Oh, right. To do something a bit. Yeah. A man hunting sword. <laughs> <laughs> That's the idea. Uh, I was very lucky. There was um, a business in France that specialized in uh, antique weapons that had dozens of blades like this, yeah. brand new, straight out of the factory, but just ne never. never used. Okay. And I ordered two, I sold one, and then I thought, I'm going to order more, and they closed down in the meantime, no. and everything's gone. But I thought, oh, I should get a dozen of them. Uh, when, when we arrived before, I was looking around, my eyes just scanned, and then I went, uh -huh. mm -hmm. So I, I spot swords. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. But, um, no, draw knife. Yeah. Uh, mm. Look at the look at the name. Persia. Yeah. They used to make tools, huh. uh, drills, tools, coffee grinders. It's like Mitsubishi used to make fighter planes. Yeah. And Toyota used to make sewing machines. That's right. Yeah. And uh, Peugeot used to make um, all sort of tools. Uh, I don't know how old that is, but it would be probably from the 50s, I'd say. Uh, Peugeot Frère, so it's uh, Peugeot Brothers. Well, I don't think these are the original handles. I if don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe they are. Maybe they are. Well, there, yeah. there, there's a washer here. There's a washer here that's missing. Hmm. But yeah, draw knives, they're, they're good for woodworking. Yeah, they look good to make um, handles and yeah. for, for tools. Um. Uh, if you want to see Paul's setting, have a look at this. And that's Paul. And the dogs. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> this is, I, I like this. Yeah. The man cave. Bring your own beer. <laughs> and he's got his own heat treat oven just there. So, yeah. This is a proper shed. It's got a nice luminescence about it. It is. It's very um, three-dimensional. Mm. So you just shape it like normal Just normal like scales. your normal scales. It's just that you've got to be a bit careful when um, uh, you use power tools because that tends to melt quite easily. Yeah. Um, well, I do a lot of my initial shaping, uh, shaping on um, uh, the belt, a rough yeah. belt. Yeah. If I if I have to do fine 
curves or fine detail on it and then I take it off and then I use um, hand files. Yeah. Yep. And then work my way down and onto sandpaper. Onto sandpaper. But, um, um, and the fumes are not very good too. Yeah. Um, so th this is pretty much the same except it's just different color. Uh, I think the pattern is a bit different. There's some dots in this one. Um, but it's always the same sort of swirls. Yeah. What's interesting is that you never know what it's going to look like until you shape it. Yeah. Because it's, it's when you start grinding it that you can really see the yeah. um, the grind and the, and the texture coming coming through. Yeah. And that's about all I've got made out of. Because I saw yeah. some I saw a picture of a knife of someone who they got wooden scales um, yeah. and they with a with a bastard file the, the very rough one day yeah they basically what they basically did was um, they got they, they they got the rough wood let's use that as an example um, got the rough wood and then they got the bastard file and yeah. they literally just damaged it oh took big, okay yeah took yeah, big yeah chunks yeah. out of it yeah. Um, and then what they did is they got resin, clear resin, like what uh, you use for the steampunk knife. Yeah. Then they got the the paint, the luminous sort of paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stirred yeah, some yeah. in. And, and then, and, and the, then the, they, they basically up. poured it into a container, like a, a plastic yeah. cup or something like that. Yeah. Um, so the cup is there and they just put that in. Yeah. And let it set. Let it set. And, and when they pull it out, they back. grind the excess off. So you have um, whatever the original material was, yeah. with and then you get all parts, of of, parts of it impregnated into it. Yeah, 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 I've seen that. So yeah. you see, like, you know, it could be a nice, um, on a curly birch yeah. um, wood, then that bit there. It's like having uh, little be, inlays and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Was on the same principle, uh, I had a bit of a play once, with um, pine cones. Yes. I've got some pine cones. Um, um, no, not pine cones. I've got um, bunya nuts. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so what I did here is um, I filled up a, a container. Yeah. Of, and it gets uh, into resin. all the crevices. Yeah. yeah. With a bit of uh, paint, just quick swirl, and then dip it in. Yeah. Tapped it to get rid of the bubbles. Took it out and um, cut slices out of it. Yeah. Uh, so th then you get the. The raisin and the, the, the yeah the, the gap where the seeds the, are. the bits yeah. that of the, 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 the little um, of the pine cone that um, that remain and it wasn't great but uh, I think it looks just, great it was just a little little experiment yeah I mean that looks good it looks better on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I really tried to abuse it. Yeah. And the and wood hardener. Wood hardener is just. Just won't move. It's um, stiff, very, very stiff. So, what, what, what I do, I um, apply it with a brush. Yeah. Wait until it dries. And then keep going. So, it's probably 12 coats yep. of wood hardener. Because uh, it soaks it up, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. So, just normal wood, normal hardener. wood hardener from the hardware store. Um, what I'm going to try next time is the, the, the resin I've been using for the steampunk knife. Because mm -hmm. um, you can apply it with a brush. Yeah. And uh, I don't know what I did. I don't know what I've done with it. Probably inside the house somewhere, and it's very runny, so you can um, uh, apply it with a br with a brush, and um, one coat should be enough. So something for your steampunk knife? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've got there was a sitting there. Yeah, there's some everywhere. There's, that's a few um, oh, yeah. a few bits that I've got left over, but then yesterday through the mail I got. Um, a good handful of um, bits and pieces and broken watches um, that I'm going <laughs> to use. But it wasn't cheap. I paid about 50 bucks for 
for a few small brass for pieces Vulcan, like for that. Vulcan, uh, yeah. Vulcan watches, but uh, it saves me time because it would take me quite a while to find uh, yeah. these old... Um, uh, Everything's up. electronic nowadays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this knife was found um, on a construction site after the last uh, floods uh, we had in Brisbane. And it was on a pile of um, debris that were carried yeah. by the Brisbane River. And it was very rusty with a lot of scratches going that way, lots of very deep scratches going that way. The handle um, was obviously not the original handle, it was a cheap handle that was just kept together with a couple of... Um, so it could have been a piece of pine wood or something It was like some that, soft yeah. wood. Yeah. Uh, and that knife had obviously been abused. Yeah. Um, took me about 30 hours yeah. to get rid of the scratches, trying not to heat up the blade too much so that it wouldn't lose its um, uh, hardness at all. But the, the, seriously, the, um, I like their thinking behind, it's, it's behind very the, the thickness. Because um, it probably is not showing up on camera, but where that belly part is there, um, it's actually thicker here than it is towards the handle. Uh, but 6.35, and here we've got 5.64. Yep. And you can see... Yeah, you need a bit more. 6.4 and 5.8. Mm. So it's, as you can see here, it's tapered in just a little bit and then it gets wider by the top of the Ricasso here, uh, sorry, the swedge, where it drops down. That's the widest point and it's also the thickest point. So skinnier here than it is there. So was um, the tang the same shape when you yeah, got it? Yeah, I didn't change the, um, the shape much. Probably lost a little bit at the back here yeah. because they used it to hammer stuff so it was flattened and damaged. But that was a perfect fit for my hand. I've got relatively large hands, but where the guard is, and a Ricasso, you can actually put your finger up there, so you can do fine detailed work. You've got a re relatively straight edge here, then you've got the belly. So because it's... The balance point is kind of about there. But when you feel it, it's still... You can feel that it's front heavy. Ooh. So... You could chop relatively well with that, and it's just, I think that's a good design. It is a good design, yeah. I think I just found the design of my next knife. Cool. All right, make a clone of it. Yeah. Cool. It's a bit wet outside.